Shenanigans, working stiffer than mannequins. Vader time like a mannequin. Mega powers, I'm savaging. Peep the babbling, got him shook off the verbal acumen. I'm the main event, meaning nobody coming after him. The topics we be tackling, ankle locking and tapping them. I hate seafood, but I might throw the Boston crab on him. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Welcome back, guys, to Heated Shenanigans Podcast. As always, you are joined by your host, Colin and Scott. Thank you guys for watching. Well, Colin, it's been a, a little bit of bad news week for me, personally. <laughs> um, yeah. On AEW recently, Sting announced that 2024 is going to be his final year in professional wrestling. And wanted to take today's episode and kind of talk about the career of sting because i think it's 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 fitting it's it's something that we should do sting is all-time great and one of the biggest draws in professional wrestling yeah let's see this is what his at least fifth decade that he's been in a major promotion 80s 90s 2000s 2010s 2020s now yeah. So <laughs> he's been around for a long time. Um he's been in basically all the all the major ones, AEW, WWE, WCW, TNA, NWA, right? Yeah. So and the NWA was a big deal in the eighties. So I mean I think the only thing he wasn't in was the ECW, to be honest with you, and I don't remember if he was or not. No, so I think it- he was the, he was never really an ECW type of guy though. So he was the holdout. He was the guy that never went to WWE up until after WCW closed shop and way after. He was a fixture in WCW from the the fledgling years to the day that they closed the door. He was a part of the final match of WCW and a part of the first Nitro main of or yeah the first main event for Nitro. <laughs> well wait was it? I, you're the Sting aficionado. Like, I, if you don't know, I'm no, not going to know. Sting wasn't in the... Uh, what was he? <laughs> I can't remember. Because I remember Luger showing up at the first Nitro. Right. And I think they saved that for Hogan and Big Bubba Rogers, which I feel that was the the main event. I don't know. It's It has been a very long time. I have slept, drank, and been hit in the head since then. So, <laughs> well, so... I mean, this it's weird because, like, Sting is, like, the last bit of our childhood that was actively wrestling because Taker retired, Triple H forced into retirement, mm-hmm. Kane is a mayor, Austin is gone, The Rock, I don't count because he just pops in for that quick cameo. Yeah. At least from the Attitude Era. Um, yeah, because Austin's had a match or two since you know, his retirement, but he he doesn't actively wrestle. Um, yeah, Sting, Sting's wild. Like, he's been retired, you know, from WWE um, because they forced him out, essentially. Um, well, yeah, the, the neck injury in that match with Rollins where things went badly. and Right. We know how WWE doctors are. They're a little bit more uh, worried of lawsuits than uh, other doctors from other wrestling promotions so well with with 2024 being sting's final year in in professional wrestling it begs the question who gets the final match with sting who is the final opponent and it's it's worth asking because all of the guys that sting had like marquee feuds with are incredibly old (laughs) so a a match with them would not be the prettiest thing in the world i i know Some out there might be clamoring for Ric Flair Sting. I am not one of them. I don't think you are either. (laughs) No. I I saw Ric Flair's last match. He's he's done. No, I... He needs to be done. I love Ric. Ric, in my opinion, is the greatest professional wrestler of all time, but I have no desire to see Ric Flair get back in a wrestling ring. But who... Colin, who in AEW should get that? Who... If they turn it into an angle and it's... 
Sting giving the rub on the way out to a guy. Who in AEW should have that honor? I mean, you'd, you'd think Darby Allen, with as much as he works works uh, with Darby, um, that would be the most logical. Um, that's really the only one that comes to mind. Most everybody else either doesn't need the rub or doesn't really have a real reason to 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 be involved like he's been around Darby Allen basically for quite a while now so you have time to put together a good story though we do have several months before the <clears throat> the final match so there is time to build into something I, I think you might be correct with Darby Allen I if they would have kept it like hush hush like not announced thing was going to have his final match I could have seen like if MJF was still heel have MJF retire Sting because that would be the ultimate thing to throw into the fans' face. I took Sting away from you. The beloved icon of professional wrestling is gone because of MJF. Yeah. You look, but the, the thing is with that with that AEW roster, there's a lot of young guys on there that could benefit from that final match with Sting. Mm -hmm. But currently, if we look at the roster, I I think it's got to be Darby. I I would the, the only other person I would be interested in seeing not because they have any sort of real history but just because we've never seen it I think would be Edge and have both of them retire simultaneously but Edge is cuz I don't think we've ever seen two wrestlers retire at the same time usually it's one putting over the other um and giving them the rub on the way out but as far as I know, I don't think two have just been like, hey, this is both our final matches. We're just going to lay it all out on the line for you guys, and then we're both going to ride off in the sunset. So um, that would be another interesting one. I don't know how much Sting has left in the tank. You could do, I mean, Edge is already in his thing with Christian. Um, so I, I don't know. Edge would be a nice other one just, for, just to see it, because we haven't ever seen it. Well... I feel on the way out, Sting is it's going to be a greatest hit on the way out, and just kind of, and I, I don't mean that in a bad way. What I what I mean is like he's going to hit everything that meant something to his career, and it would not surprise me in the slightest if Ric Flair is somehow, or yeah, let's say Ric Flair being involved in some way with the final match for Sting. I think it would be fitting. Yeah. Not as an opponent, but as <laughs> maybe a manager of the opposing heel or in Sting's corner or something of that nature, have Flair involved. Because you, you're you hard-pressed to bring up Sting without ever bringing up Ric Flair. Though, granted, Sting's had a lot of great feuds over the years. Rick Rude, Hulk Hogan. The NWO. I mean, Kurt Angle and, and TNA. Yeah, and it, it's just one of those things. Like, I mean, who's gonna get it, and and who needs it? I know, like, we won't see Sting bring back the surfer look. And look, I'm the last guy to be given hair advice, but <laughs> Stinger's hair, I don't think we could. I don't think he could pull off the, the flat top blonde look right now. No, but it would be nice if on the way out. If he busted out the tights, at least, or a singlet incorporating the the surfer look, because that was the the one. Maybe I don't. Do you feel the crow was more iconic than the surfer look? The crow was more. The crow was during a time when wrestling was at its most popular. So yes, um, I. I remember more from when he was the crow in WCW than when he was uh, the surfer uh, gimmick. So, yeah, it's it's got to be the crow at this point, I think. He's had it for so long. Um, I Only your very, let's say, experienced wrestling fan would know what that is. Um, the vast majority of your casuals are going to have no idea what the hell's going on. Um, so I, I, yeah, maybe for like one match or maybe just like just one off. But 
I don't know how many matches he's really going to have left if he's going to do more than one. Like, we don't really know. I don't know how much he really specified. So my guess would be you're probably not going to see it. But, or if you do, it's 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 not going to be as grandiose as you would probably want. Where do you feel when you're ranking the personas that Sting has had from the, the wolf pack, the crow, the surfer, where does the Joker version of Sting fall into this pecking order of memorable personas? I think it's relatively memorable, but I think it's better than Wolfpack. Um, it's fighting with Surfer for second, I would say. it It is quite memorable, but it wasn't super, super, super long lived. I guess that's probably, and that's why Wolfpack, I think, is also in that same boat, because it wasn't like a 10, 15 year run. Um, whereas the crow is like several decades long now at this point. Uh, so I don't think it could touch the crow on that front. It was very unique and creative. Um, and I liked, um, that style, uh, and that gimmick. Um, but I don't think it can touch the crow. I could, I could see it being second. Um, but it's, it's going neck and neck with, with the surfer. I'll be honest, I hated Wolfpack version of Sting. I, I mean, I, I, Sting's my favorite of all time, but that the Wolfpack Sting, like, there was just something that never really sat right with me. Like, even growing older and looking back at that, that particular run of Sting, it felt so out of place. I don't know, maybe it's because we had spent the better part of almost two years with him being uh, a brood type figure and lurking in the shadows and not speaking and just being a lone vigilante like you know he was by himself and suddenly he's part of you know a bigger group and it didn't really make sense so that's that i could see where you're coming from about but joker sting i thought was done at a time that and all the greats and this is something like all the greats like hogan sting they they knew when to turn the character a different angle mm -hmm. to get a different reaction because they didn't want it to grow old and stale, even though these are, in this example, two of the most iconic professional wrestlers of all time. But Sting had always been really good about adding just a little bit something different in, even maybe doing a different move in the match. Like he was really good at prolonging his career and outside of the neck injury and that knee injury Sting suffered right before the originally planned world championship match against Ric Flair. Sting had been relatively healthy and had a relatively uh, major injury-free career. Now, he did have that knee injury towards the end of WCW, but overall, I mean, Sting was um, pretty solid and stayed healthy. Yeah, and... Uh... He also pulls a lot from pop culture because, um, you know, the, you got The Crow, which was an actual movie. Uh, Joker Sting, I believe, was based off pretty, Heath Ledger. Off Heath Ledger. Um, so, you know, the past two that he's done that have covered since, what, the 97, 98, when did Crow come out? 96. Okay, 96. So, like, the mid-90s to now, like, it's all based on movie um characters so uh he, he really pulls from from pop culture and and that's usually a good sign um a lot of people pay attention to pop culture and, and it helps you connect with the fans um not that he needed help connecting with fans but uh yeah i just overall i um it it sucks to see him retiring but he's been around for 50 years so <laughs> it's <laughs> I mean, we've had a long time with him. It, it's 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 been really fortunate. There's some there's been some really all time greats who have not had the luxury of being around for this long and still capable. Well, and, and the thing that's going to be cool when it eventually happens, at some point AEW will have a Hall of Fame. They will induct wrestlers from their company into the Hall of Fame. And to my knowledge. Sting would be the first guy to ever be in the WWE, TNA, and AEW Hall of Fame. And I think that would be a really cool honor for Sting. 
Yeah, and I think he would be probably one of the first ones in um, in AEW. I mean, he was there from the get go, if I remember correctly. He 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 came. God, was it about a year in? Mm, I mean, still maybe. Like yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he, he wasn't there from the launch, but yeah, it's not like he just recently hopped on board. It's like, hey, guys, got room for me? But yeah. I, what what do you think? So looking back at Sting's historical career, Colin. What was your favorite moment and your favorite match of Sting? Ugh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, because I didn't get, I didn't watch a lot of WCW in the 90s, um, and I was not, I did not follow TNA. Unfortunately, most of what I remember from Sting were the negatives and not necessarily his fault, like uh, the Jeff Hardy incident victory road um his wrestlemania match that should have gone much differently um you know that entire wwe situation um so i I don't really actually have a genuine wcw moment that i can think of off the top of my head um i i remember a lot of him his return as the crow hanging out in the rafters um was very unique and finally coming down and taking on the NWO. Um, I think that moment was probably the biggest for me. It, it's not a single match. Um, I think him taking on the NWO is probably my favorite moment. If we're going to go there, um, him, <laughs> him uh, clubbing uh, macho man, Randy Savage with a bat. I think <laughs> really, you know, that was pretty good. So I, I, yeah, I don't. I don't have a specific match. I think. I think I wasn't particularly aware, and it would be unfair of me to try and just throw out, you know, a match. Um, but I, I'm gonna go ahead and say just that moment in that section of time when he was basically haunting the NWO. I, I think you would have a, several matches lined up. I, I'd imagine. I, I have several. I, I have. I've, I'm gonna kind of cheat here. I have two that are. That, God, they're one A and one B for me. And it's one that I don't think a lot of people would immediately think of when they think of Sting because they immediately jump to Vader, Rick Rude, Flair. And don't be wrong, those were all historic matches. But there was a match that happened with William Regal at the Great American Bash. I believe it was in 90, might have been 96. Yeah, it was in 96. It was right before the NWO happened. And that match was, I just was really just above expectation for what those two because those styles i didn't think were going to mesh but turns out like again it had william regal in it so i should have not had any doubts <laughs> but no that match was really good and i the other favorite match for me and it's weird because he really wasn't in the match it was a bait and switch was fall brawl 96 where sting came out cleared house proved he was with wcw and then left WCW. <laughs> but I, I, I think those were my favorite matches. My, my favorite moment for Sting, personally, God, it's so hard because he's, he's, I've seen so many Sting matches. But I think my favorite moment was him winning the NWA title from Jeff Jarrett at Bound for Glory in TNA. Mm. Because not only from a historical standpoint, that was the longest gap in NWA championship wins, but I had I had stayed completely off the internet. I I wanted to just go into this watching like I knew Sting had joined TNA. I didn't know if it was going to be for long term. His career was on the line. I was I just went into it blind, and and he won. And I was oh that's really cool. He's not retiring. And I just, I thought that match, again, it it wasn't a technical masterpiece, but he was in there with Jeff Jarrett, and Jeff Jarrett can tell a good story, Sting can tell a good story, and I thought that, that just that moment for him winning was really cool. It was a big moment in TNA history. Yeah. Uh, good Lord. The amount of moments and just history he's got is extraordinary. I, there's not many that can top him. Um, I'm sure there's a few, but uh, especially like your Ric Flair's or whatever. But damn, I just thought of another one too. Uh, well, go ahead. 
God, Colin would be here all night. This will be, be the last memory, then we'll move on. <laughs> I, I think like you would, you'd be remiss if you didn't bring up Uncensored, where Sting made the decision to align himself undoubtedly, undeniably with the WCW, pointing the bat at Hogan and at Hogan's trembling and and Rodman's trying to calm him down, and Hogan's like, he's pointing at me, brother, he's pointing at me. <laughs> and, and, and Sting's got the bat pointed at him, and then that, God, but so many good Sting moments. And I'm <laughs> looking forward to doing a top 10 of, of Sting as we get closer to that final match. But, oh, Colin, like, we're all time. I knew you were going to ask this question. I was going to ask this. <laughs> all time, where would Sting fall for you? He's he's hovering around the latter stages of the top five, probably between like fifth and seventh. There's just some big names that it's hard to to move past, and there's some there's some that even if their their um even if their careers were shortened, um they kind of transcended wrestling. Um and Sting is in that group. Um, so I'd say, yeah, between fifth and seventh, somewhere in that range, um, as far as just all around wrestlers. For me, I think he's personally he's he's number one, but that's a biased opinion. But if we're if we're looking at everything in a vacuum, I I think he's in the top ten. I mean, you it you can't God, you can't compete with Flair, you can't compete with the contributions of Hogan, Austin, Taker, like I mean, there's a, there's some big names in that yep. in that list, but Rock, Sting, Triple H, you okay? One thing I I had I'd actually debated about a lot of people, Cena. I firmly <laughs> believe, and I'll probably catch some flack for this, but I don't care. It's heated shenanigans podcast. We say hot topics here. Yep. And this is a hot take. I honestly think if you go back and look. During that 90s uh, Monday Night War, mm-hmm. I think Sting was more over than Austin. And I know that's a hot one, and I know that might ruffle some feathers, but if you stop and think, look at the mask in the crowd, the reaction, it was just as loud, sometimes louder than Austin when Sting came out. And look, I know Austin was getting some of those Road Warrior level pops but yeah i do think wcw because it, it, it's so weird because if you look at it they were both the focal points of their company mm-hmm. sting fighting the good fight with nwo austin fighting the mcmahons and then the corporate ministry mm-hmm. but overall like i think sting was more more popular during there was a i think there was a moment Maybe not always, but definitely a moment in that Monday Night War where Sting was more over than Austin. I think up until things started to shift and WWE was routinely beating WCW, I think that for the first like maybe year and a half or so, I would agree with you. Once it turned and yeah, WCW shot themselves in the foot with the McFoley thing, uh, I think that went more Austin. Um, the The difference is that Austin's storyline is more... Was never overshadowed by a guy that went into business for himself at a pay-per-view that was the biggest in the company's history, but yeah, go on. <laughs> I was going to say it's more... Be- like, you can relate to it more. The likelihood of you going into work tomorrow... <laughs> And half of your coworkers have decided to beat the shit of the rest of your coworkers and have decided we're taking over the company is very, very unlikely. However, you going into work tomorrow and your boss being a douchebag is highly likely. <laughs> yeah. So like all of us who've had who have worked a job where we've had a boss and the boss was a piece of trash. Oh, we've been there. I'm there now. Um same. <laughs> Like you, you, you want to go and beat the crap out of him, and you had that Austin moment where you know Austin beat up his boss, and you wish you were Austin. I 
yeah, I've had bad coworkers, but I've never been concerned that a coworker was going to come up and spray paint my face with NWO on it. So th- that's probably the only difference is while Sting was popular, his was less relatable. His storyline was less relatable than Austin's was. And I think that's why Austin's became so extremely popular is you just, you could relate more to it The in the long run. The only thing that I hated me and you were just gonna take down, take down Dustin and just just, just, just spray HSP on him. <laughs> Welcome to the club, brother. <laughs> oh, shoot. No, the, the the one thing that I I hated about Sting's career is there was a lot of times that he was booked as an idiot, especially with Ric Flair. Like, how many times are are you gonna trust him and then he screws you? Up? The the thing at Halloween Havoc, like, yeah. I didn't like that he was constantly made to look like a fool because he is so trusting. Yeah. And I'm I'm always going to wonder what would have happened to Sting's career and popularity had it been a clean finish at Starcade and he got that big win clean over Hogan. And I think we can safely say that Hogan knew what would have happened. Because here's the thing, like when Hogan came into WCW, they pushed Sting all the way to the side. Like he was down doing like B-level storylines with Luger over Can You Trust Him? Like that was the only thing they would ever have for Sting. Can he trust his friends? Yeah. Nine times out of ten, all of Sting's friends screwed him over. Yeah. But if you... Hey, wrestling. If If you look at like what could have been for Sting, because I think he could have been a lot bigger in WCW, and that's scary to think about because he was so over. Had the thing with Hogan not went down. What a surprise. Oh, I, I know if I'm not going to get any any argument out of <laughs> you with the Hulk Hogan today. Boy, you're a... Boy, what a hot take, Scott. Hogan screwing people over in real life? Oof. Golly gee, we didn't see that I, coming. I don't... I don't remember a single time except for this time and this time and this time and this time and this time. We got uh, we're up to 26 minutes. Uh, we're going to be here another 30 talking about all the times Hogan screwed somebody over. This time, well, this time, we we get it. We, <laughs> we get this it. time. <laughs> I mean, this time. <laughs> I just, it's been a great ride. Yeah, And I don't think we're ever going to see anybody like the Stinger again. I think Hogan's screwing somebody over right now. <laughs> I, I just, I, it's been a hell of a ride. And whatever Sting does after this, like, I hope he enjoys retirement. I, I hope he can take solace in the fact that he was one of the greatest of all time. And uh, Fire is a babyface top five. And that ain't even, that's not, yeah. even, you can't even argue that. That's well, he's almost five. exclusively a babyface, so. He he's in that that category of top five greatest baby faces of all time, maybe number one. But sure it wasn't John Cena. <laughs> no, there was too much of a divide. There's times like <laughs> I was I was being facetious. He no, uh, don't be wrong. Matt, big match, John. He's up there, of course. He, he's up there, but he ain't getting those sting baby face reactions. No, but the he is now. But the thing is, like, what whatever comes next for Sting. I, I hope it's it's nothing but tranquility and solace in the fact that he had an undeniably great career. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't be in the in the business for five decades and always being in very successful businesses. Um, he's been on TV for you know the best his part entire of, life. Yeah, for I mean he's been on TV for five decades. You're not gonna you're not gonna be like that if you're not good. Um, most people at this stage of their career are on the indie scene and he's still kicking it on live TV. So, well, guys, uh, I think this is a good stopping point for, for this episode before Colin goes off another Hulk Hogan <laughs> tangent, if I can see it brewing over there. <laughs> but guys, again, we want to thank you so much for all the support, all the new subscribers, all the likes, comments, shares. We love it. We love you for it. And guys, again, as always, we do have a major show coming up here in Lafayette, Indiana on Friday, November 3rd at the Tippecanoe County Fairgrounds. 
It is DCCW and proud partnership with us here at Heated Shenanigans Podcast, presenting Flexing on Muscular Dystrophy, a benefit show for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. And we have the biggest card lined up the city of Lafayette has ever seen. And it will be headlined by WWE Hall of Famer Devon Dudley, WWE legend Victoria, and some of the absolute greatest talents on the independent circuit. Eric Dillinger, Matt Brannigan, Brett Havoc, Dale Patricks, Josh Crane, Sage Phillips. Hell, I could list the entire card. It's that good. <laughs> and it's going to be worth the price of admission with just the triple main event alone. So, again, guys, doors open at 5. Show starts at 7 p.m. right here in Lafayette, Indiana. We hope you guys come out. Get your autographs, get your pictures with Devon Victoria. Enjoy a great family-friendly night at professional wrestling and help out a great cause with the Muscular Dystrophy Association. So for Colin and myself, everybody take care. Have a great week, and we'll see you on the next episode. Oh, there's another one. (laughs)